got you on the radio, yeah, you got me on the radio. Kick it on the radio. Welcome back to Around the House with Eric G. We are broadcasting live from the Spring Portland Home and Garden Show out here. We are with Pyramid Heating and Cooling. I'm Eric G. I'm Dane Vodder. Hey, a couple things. Well, I want to give you the number for the show today. That's 503-417-9595. 503-417-9595. But in the future, we're going to have a new number, so write this one down as well. That's 503-521-7072. That is our 24-7 line. So if you want to call us, if you want to text us, give us a call. I will call you back. We'll stick you on the show. It's going to be the only way that you can reach us after today. Correct. So that's going to be the new number to call in, but it's 24-7. You can get us there because as we expand the show out, that's going to help us get you there. Let's jump out here to uh, Jeff in Kaiser, who's been patiently wait- waiting. Welcome to Around the House. Hey, thanks. You know, I uh, love your show. All this great advice is almost as good as free beer. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that, thank you. That's a pretty good That's pretty high good praise. Yeah, That's high praise, too. Yeah. Well, you just saved me money. Hey, uh, I've got a Linux unit, and the uh, filters are on the, uh, just before the blower on the negative side of the air pressure. And, uh, of course, it, well, in houses I've lived in in the past, uh, the filters have been in the uh, large intake, stay at the end of the hallway in the bedroom, at the negative uh, pressure intake. Um, if I put filters on those, like houses I've seen in the past, wouldn't that essentially keep the ductwork cleaner? Well, it would certainly keep the return ductwork cleaner if that return ductwork between the opening and where your existing filters are dirty, then it won't keep that from going through the furnace. Usually, it's easier for the fan to overcome the resistance of the filter when the filter is right at the furnace. But ultimately, what we're looking for is good filtration. So if you can do that with a filter grill at, at the intake air coming in from the house, then uh, that works as well. That would keep the whole system clear, um, but would I have would I eliminate the uh, other filters uh, at the uh, blower itself? Then? I would typically do that because you don't want to uh, overstress the design of that fan motor and that fan system. So you don't want to, typically you don't want to double filter. Okay. Oh, fantastic. I'll uh, go to work on it. All right. Hey, Jeff, thanks for calling in. Thanks for listening to Around the House. Tom and Cap sit tight here. I want to bring on Jake from the wall here real quick. We just caught him walking by. He's a good friend He's of the show. He's a good friend of the show. Jake, welcome to Around the House, brother. Hey, man. Always a pleasure being with you. Hey, let's talk for just a second here. You got a heck of a booth up there, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, all the all the vendors down there did a great job this year with the display gardens. Uh, you know, we here at the wall, we always go big. You know, it's one of the things we like to do every year. Uh, our designer, Larry Borland with Borland Landscape and Design, did a great job. Absolutely a great job this year. Man, so if anybody out there needs to have that backyard, front yard, whatever, dialed in retaining wall, you guys are the guys to go to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We do everything from your, you know, basic concrete patio to landscape retaining walls to engineered retaining walls pile driving you name helical it helical piers helical piers yep, <laughs> yep you're familiar with that oh yeah right? you got that uh, you got that chimney or deck or oh, yeah. whatever else out there that's yep. sinking this guy can get well, it thank, in you know thanks to you we just got that nice little one over there in northeast portland you know yep. that was a good referral great customer everything went smooth yeah he called into the show did he? Yeah. Great. That was great. a caller. So That's perfect. That, that worked perfect. out well. Yeah, you got some great stuff over there, man. That looks uh, dialed in contemporary backyard. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Uh, but everyone down here, the gardens are beautiful this year. I highly recommend people get down to the expo and check out the Home and Garden Show. All right, say, brother. This is the first time I've been to the spring one, and some of those displays over there are just it's amazing. incredible. It's amazing, man. You've got a nice Mercedes parked right next to it out there. It's like dialed in. I know. It's awesome. <laughs> it's perfect, man. All right, Jake. Hey. Thanks for coming on real Absolutely, quick, man. man. And uh, if you guys want to get a hold of him, buythewall.com. That's correct. That's by the the wall. Com. By the the wall. Com. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Always happy to have you on, Jake. Hey, cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, brother. All right. Hey, let's run out here to, uh, you know, Cap and Twelton has been waiting for a long time here. Let's run out to Cap. Welcome to Around the House. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. What can we help you with today? Hey, I just bought a house in Tualatin. And uh, they did an upgrade on their uh, AC and heating unit. 
and they put in a train smart thermostat. And I can control this baby anywhere in the in, anywhere in the city. I can just dial it up, dial it down, and there it goes. Now the question I have is, can I do something similar to my house in, on the coast that is in floor radiant heat and has seven zones? In all likelihood, there's no problem doing that. Uh, we've got all kinds of thermostats and controls that uh, are. Wi-Fi, or they they connect to a router. So as long as you've got a router in the house that's connected to the internet, and you've got power, then uh, it should be achievable. So how would I do? Would I just replace the thermostat that I have down there, or uh, how does that work? Hard to so say. I, uh, yeah, uh, it is rather hard to say. So I don't know what type of control you've got. Typically the Wi-Fi thermostats operate best with a uh, neutral and and so you've got a power wire which is usually a red wire and then a, a return wire which usually is a white wire and then there's typically another wire we would need for a neutral on those so that it the, the thermostats control uh, pull a little bit more power when they're a Wi-Fi and enabled thermostat and and so minimum three if we're a heating only control assuming 24 uh, volt um, hot water radiant system right okay All right. So if, 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 if we weren't doing it that way, there are other ways to get there with wireless controls, doing um, um, systems. It just gets a little more expensive. I say, now you're, now you're changing a bunch more parts out besides just a thermostat. Absolutely. It's, it can be fun, yeah. but uh, it, does, it does cost a little bit more. Yeah, because yeah, you know, it would be nice to be able to, you know, because radiant heat takes so long to come up, but once it's there, it's just like heaven. And so oh, man, it's great. Going down the, going down to the coast, it'd be nice to be able to dial it up before you got there. Absolutely. You figure if you can do it 24 hours ahead, uh, you've got it up to temperature really comfortable. You're good. Hey, Cap, thanks for calling in, man. We really appreciate you listening to Around the House. Let's run out here real quick before we got to break to Tom in Battleground. Welcome to Around the House. Happy Saturday, guys. Happy, Happy Saturday. Saturday. So, um, something that Holly said, I don't know if I heard it correctly, I think it was Holly, with the, the 30-year-old furnace, gas furnace. Yep. She, indi- she yeah, what I heard her say was that when it comes on, she gets the, mm, irritated eyes. And that caused me to think that maybe she needs to get that thing checked out as soon as possible for a cracked heat exchanger, because she may be getting carbon monoxide poisoning in the house. Yeah, it, it, it often exhibits itself uh, as uh, in a flu-like system, or you just don't feel good, right. it, um, yep. that type of thing. And then you you go to work, and you're fine during the day, and you come home, and by the next morning you're you're not feeling well again. But it's it's not one where I would. I would push that limit. I love carbon monoxide detectors. Yeah, you got to have those in there, no uh, question. They, they're, they're a safety, but I look at a carbon monoxide detector a lot like a fence. You know, they got those fences around the holes where the water down of the ocean mm-hmm. sprays up. I don't lean on them. Yeah. Because I don't like that last... Point, I can stand back a foot and work just fine. So yeah. I like to be a little more proactive on it. Yeah, that's where that maintenance comes back in and make sure that you're inspecting those things and making sure you got that correct. That's true. So, but, Tom, that is a great point. Thanks for calling in. All right, when we come back, we'll be taking all your calls at 503-417-9595. That's 503-417-9595 just as soon as Around the House returns. Welcome back to Around the House with Eric G. This is where we talk home improvement every Saturday afternoon. This segment Around the House is brought to you by Dare Homes, building quality custom homes throughout the Pacific Northwest for 50 years now. Find a design center near you at adarehomes.com, and that is CCB number 593. And we've had a ton of phone calls today. We'll get to them in just a second. If you want to call in and be part of the show today, 503-417-9595. That's 503-417-9595. Now, if you're going to join us 
with some of our future episodes. We want you to go ahead and call in at any time for those. We've got painting coming up. We've got home technology stuff we'll be talking about next week. That number is a 24-7 number, and that is 503-521-7072. You can even text in on that. We're broadcasting live from the Portland Spring Home and Garden Show, and we're at Pyramid Heating and Cooling's booth. We got a ton of phone calls coming in here. Let's jump out to Terry and Ex- Estacada. Welcome to Around the House. Terry, you there? Well, All right, Terry, Terry sounds like hold. we're going to put you back on hold for just a second. Okay. Let's jump out here to Dale in Vancouver. Welcome to Around the House. How are you doing today? Good, man. What can we help you with today? Well, uh, we bought a house about four or five years ago. And uh, we have a crawl space, but I was wondering, is it feasible and how much to put central air in it? What have you got that's heating the house right now? Just some heaters in the wall. I really don't like them. So I would look to go to uh, one of the ductless heat pump systems, just putting in a uh, single zone unit size for the main area. It typically cuts your energy cost in half or your heating cost in half, and you get cooling with it. We can do multi-zone units and uh, potentially put uh, multiple indoor units in, but the, the most effective, quickest way to do this is to at least do one indoor unit uh, in the home. We've got one of these sitting behind us that's actually functioning back here, and I'll tell you what, we pumped it up to about 86 degrees here, and we're in the convention center. I was sweating. This thing was dialed in, and now we've got it down at 70, and we've got some warm air bursts burst through here, so it's been kind of cool in this, too. So well, it's a good way to go, does, man. Does that go on the wall, then, or...? So well, you've got an outdoor unit because we're going to remove the heat from outside or remove the cooling from outside. And then you've got an indoor unit. It, it goes typically on the wall. We've got different configurations. So there are some high wall units and some low wall units. There are even some ducted units that we might put in the attic and uh, set up to blow the air into your different rooms. It's a good okay, way to go. I'd have to go. I'd have to go through my wall somewhere into the house there. Yes, yes. Okay. But you're only drilling a few holes. It's not like you're putting a big opening through there. Right. We're, yeah, we're talking just, like okay. a two-inch hole. Okay, yeah. I was just curious because uh, uh, I know it's going to cost a little bit. I was just wondering. Uh, I didn't see where they'd be able to put the ducks all the way through. So what you're Don't have to. Sounds good. Yep. And our, our biggest problem, basically, is the living room. We heat that up, and I think we can keep the rest of the house okay. So. You put the right size system in there, man, you'll keep that whole house comfortable all year round, and that's the key. Yep. All right, Dale, Thank thanks for calling into Around the House, man. Thanks for listening. Let's run out here. Let's try Terry and Estacate again here again. Let's see if you're yeah. there. Terry, welcome <laughs> to Around the House. Hear me now. Hey. We gotcha. <laughs> okay, I've got a water heater question. Sure. Um... I've been looking at them, and uh, somebody I know has uh, uh, is trying to convince me what he did was uh, a stainless steel tank water heater. The advantage is supposed to be that there's no anode rod, and um, it doesn't uh, uh, rust when the on a traditional water heater you've got the glass lining that eventually cracks, and the water gets through to the steel tank and uh, rusts, and that's why they usually die. Uh, or at least that's one of the reasons why they usually die. That's not what? supposed to happen with the stainless tank. Uh, the idea of a stainless tank is exactly that, that it's a lifetime tank and lasts forever. They're a bit spindy, but uh, they do last a long, long time. It doesn't mean that the, um, the heating elements uh, won't fail someday uh, or that the tank can't scale because that's, uh, that's what's coming from the outside into the tank with your water. But uh, it's, it can work very, very well. Yeah, if you've got really good water in there, you're going to have a different result than if you've got some very hard water coming there. You're going to have just as many problems with a hard water situation. So it all comes down to the really the water quality coming into your home. Well, we're on a well system, and I'm told our water has slightly more iron than full run. Gotcha. Well, I would probably get that water tested to take a look at it and make sure that you've got that dialed in. Okay. 
That way you'll kind of know whether this is worth the investment because that's what it's going to come down to and how long you're going to be in that home. You know, I would measure that tank versus, you know, if you figure you're going to put a tank in that thing every decade. But, uh, you know, that's probably your worst case scenario. So I would kind of measure those two together and see what comes out the best for you. Okay. I will do that. All right. Thanks, Terry. Thanks for uh, calling into Around the House. We appreciate it. That opens up another line here at 503-417-9595. That's 503-417-9595. I want to talk ductless for a minute. I was going to say, I've been standing in front of this thing all day, and it's been awesome. (laughs) we got a minute here, too, before we go out to break. Actually, about a minute, but... I want to talk this next segment about ductless because sure. so many people, especially in Portland here, don't have any kind of air conditioning system. And you can drive around and, and just in the block and, you know, you see a dozen window air conditioners hanging out there. But That's the expensive way to do it. So it, it is. It's uh, the, the question comes aesthetically. Does it fit the character of the house? Do they have ductwork and a furnace already? Frankly, at that point, why not put in central air conditioning and use the delivery system that you have and make that work and you can end up with a phenomenal system. However, if you're someone with uh, electric uh, wall heat, electric ceiling heat, um, something along that line where you just don't have ductwork, Boy, is this a great answer. Uh, especially if you've got those old cadet heaters sitting in the house. And so many 90 homes, 90s homes around here were built with those, 80s and 90s homes. Absolutely. And, oh, one, you're, you know, those things, by the way, you should be vacuuming those things out and servicing those out there as well. If you haven't done it, a good time to do it this weekend. But you can get into something that actually gives you some conditioned air that's got a filter and stuff in it. You'll be surprised how clean that house stays, even with these type of filters. Yes, it, it, the amazing thing is that uh, back uh, a few years ago, Bonneville did a study of well over 2,000 homes. PGE did a study. Energy Trust did a study. They all found that just doing an electric heated house, just doing one indoor unit, would cut that heating bill between 48 and 51 percent. Man. That is a huge number. We come back, I want to talk about how that's going to fit into your home because these things can really make a big energy savings and make it more comfortable because I tell you what, that's when you're going to fight it and save some money. All right, we'll do that just as soon as Around the House returns. Back to Around the House with Eric G. This is where we talk home improvement every Saturday afternoon. Thanks for joining us. We are broadcasting live here from the Spring Home and Garden Show here at the Portland Expo Center. Having a great time with our friends at Pyramid Heating and Cooling in their booth. Come on and see us. We're going to be here for a little bit longer today. By the way, this segment's brought to you by Western Construction Systems. Was your house built prior to 1940? If so, chances are it's not bolted to the foundation. That's not good for an earthquake. Find out if you're prepared for that. For a free estimate, call Western Construction Systems, and they are CCB 94222. we got a special guest in here. we got Stephanie Hi. from the HBA. Welcome to Around the House. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here with Around the House. you got a cool party going on here today. Um, an amazing party that we're throwing for like 15,000 people, so come on down. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's alpacas, whiskey vendors, everything's here. <laughs> it is all here, one stop. Exactly. Well, let's talk about what you guys have been doing real quick and then some of these cool announcements we have with Pyramid Heating and Cooling here, too. Very much so. So we represent the Home Builders Association. We do many different consumer shows, Home and Garden being one of them. Our members are family to us. They are here as exhibitors. You can see our remodelers. You can come and look at fencing and landscaping. Like you said, we have whiskey vendors, alpacas. We have an amazing kid zone. So if you have kids, do not let that keep you away. Portland parents here. So please come on down to see all of that. Exactly. And... 
Let's talk about the tours. Yes. Yeah, so we do tour of remodeled homes, which is in May. And that is two days where you get to tour beautifully remodeled homes and meet the remodelers face to face. You get to see what they've done in a home. You get to speak with them. And Pyramid Heating and Cooling is one of our sponsors for tour. So if you come down to the Home and Garden Show, visit their booth. They have a coupon code for $2 off for that ticket. Nice. So you can talk about that and save some money for the tour. Exactly. And that's a great way to go shop potential people out there because you've got legitimate people that are in there showing off the work they've done and there's not a better way to get a feel for it than walking through it. Exactly and all of these remodelers are our professional remodeler organization and yep. they are all CCB. You can talk with them and ask your questions right then and there and they're right in front of you. Used to be a part of that for some construction companies I worked with. Great organization. Thank you. And then of course um, the big one. July we have Northwest Natural Street of Dreams. Um, our big sponsor and then also new this year we're so happy to have this pyramid heating and cooling nice. um, so yes come down talk to them let them know what you're looking for they can tell you what they're doing in the homes there on the street that's gonna be that's great in july it's a great one man and that always comes up so quick i don't know how you guys do it getting all those it's like herding cats getting all the houses <laughs> ready at the last minute it is awesome it's going to be in wilsonville so if you're driving down stafford road take a look to see it being built from the ground up it is amazing what that's where together. that is okay yes. i've seen it down there <laughs> big announcement I love the scoop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Cat's out of the bag now. That's right. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming down. Thank this is you. a great show. This thing's going through tomorrow, so make sure you get down here, take a look at those products, and see what you got going on. Thank so, you so thanks much. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you guys you. are awesome. All right. Well, we've been talking heating and cooling and all those different things here. We're going to get Dave back in here yeah, for Pyramid Heating and exactly. Cooling. Exactly. Let's run out of here to Stephen and Gresham. Welcome to Around the House. Hello. After happy afternoon. Thanks, man. What can we help you with today? So my house was built in about in 2007. Um, it's a two story with a daylight basement, so it's basically three stories. Our basement, no matter what we've done, it's always cold. Um, so I'm just I'm, now I'm hearing about just listening to you guys. I'm hearing about this. Would this be a good option for our basement, or would it interfere with the rest of the house? Well, I. I think it's a perfect option for a basement level. Uh, somehow we have to get that heat down to the floor, and uh, when it's on a central system, the ductwork's always in the ceiling, heat rises. Guess right. what? You got a nice warm head if you're standing up and you're fairly tall. If you're like me, and particularly if you sit down, your feet are always cold. So right. I'm with you. And then you got a three-story house, so that that hot air is continually trying to fight its way upstairs. That's right. Right. I mean, yeah. And I mean, the upstairs is always the upstairs is always warm. We've tried closing vents off, but then it seems like the the system is laboring because it's trying to. It just seems like it's running more often when we start closing vents to the upstairs. So, it, depending so I, on how that ductwork was designed, when you start closing vents, you can actually take that uh, furnace out of uh, the manufacturer's specifications yeah, and damage and, that furnace doing it. Right, and that's and that's why I've, I was listening to your show, and I kind of picked that actual piece up off of one of your previous up your shows. You know, to be careful closing vents and stuff. So I'm like, well, when it's kind of opened everything back up, and the system doesn't seem to labor as much, but still the basement's closed. And and I had a guy come check everything, and he said, well, when they did all the duct work, they did duct work to the basement and to the main floor all off the same lines. Yep. So yep. yep. That's kind of normal. Yep, that yeah. is the shortcut way of putting something in for a builder spec kind of installation. Our ideal yeah. is where we can run separate trunks. That way we can zone it. We can put a thermostat in and uh, put a return toward the floor in that lower level and uh, get the right air change. It just yeah. isn't very practical all the time relative yeah. to the space it takes up and right. the cost of installing. Absolutely. Yeah, I've got three trunks right now coming off, but they like they all go to different, like the, each one trunk goes to the, to the ceiling and another trunk goes to the main floor in the basement, and it, uh, there's three trunks in there, so it doesn't really do any good to close off just one of them. Yep. So no, nope. this might be the cost-effective it, solution for you, man. I might. Uh, I'll be looking into it. Thank you very much. Cool, Perfect. man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, give Pyramid Heating a call. They'll come out and uh, take a peek at it for you. Thanks for listening to Around the House. So let's get back to these things for a little bit. I loved them. I 
I, I've seen him for a lot of years, but I remember I was out in New York at uh, my buddy Skip Bedell's house from Catch a Contractor. I was just with him this last week down at uh, down in Vegas, but it was a uh, we were in New York, Long Island, August summertime. It was humid. It was nasty hot, and I walked into his house. And he had an older house, that, you know, with uh, radiant heating in that thing. And I walked in at that, and they were just, he had a guy out there. They had just installed it and was doing some fine-tuning a couple days later. That thing was like a meat locker inside. I was impressed at how well that thing worked. It's, it's amazing. Size correctly, uh, designed correctly. They are amazing. If you go over to Europe... You know, we're talking the average building is a little older than it is yeah. here. Yeah. And they often have boiler systems in, so there is no forced air system. You'll very frequently see this type of system put in because you can do it without ductwork, and it works very well. Yeah, even in the Northeast, when I was out in Boston out there, I was talking to people out there, including uh, some of the guys at this old house, and I'm not name-dropping, but they were talking about because they've got... You know, the, the coal-fired boilers and things like that that are even common out there were not as common here. I mean, we have our share, but not like, you know, you can go out there and I was sitting in a bar that was built in 1659. Yeah. Not happening here on the West Coast. However, you got a lot of homes in that era out there. And even so here, though, it's great because there's so many homes with, with uh, you know, wall heat and baseboard heaters. and it's perfect. So it... A really good application is that converted attic. You know, well, a lot of uh, 20s and 30s and 40s homes, they maybe had a, an old sawdust or coal furnace, never had ductwork run up to that upper floor that uh, later was converted really from an attic into a bedroom. Perfect application. We even have ducted mini split systems like this that will put in an attic or behind a knee wall and run to a couple three four different rooms and really do a good job of conditioning those spaces yeah and those those in the summertime those things get so hot up in there those 20s homes with the two bedrooms up there or maybe the one bedroom yeah and there's no i mean there's only so much insulation because there's four inch four inches of insulation up there august it's a miserable place to be you can reclaim that space back that's right all right we come back we're gonna wrap up the show where did the time go today this has been wild we're gonna uh talk a little bit more about uh carrier and some of these ductless systems just as soon as around the house returns Last night I said I was afraid to let go You changed me, made my great awake in the cold Welcome back to Around the House with Eric G. This is where we talk home improvement. We've been broadcasting live out here with Pyramid Heating and Cooling. Great sponsor of the show at the Spring Home and Garden Show here in Portland at the Expo Center. This show goes through tomorrow, so make sure you get down here. There's a ton of cool things out here as well. You want to talk to Pyramid Heating and Cooling. They're right here, uh, kind of right next to the big 300 sign, right smack dab in the middle of the hall so you can't miss it. One little thing before you go to this caller real quick I want to say is all of our calls coming in from here on out, you're going to need to give us a call at 503 503- 521-7072, 24 hours a day. So you can call us if you're working nights. You can text us at this number. So 503-521-7072. If you don't have something to write with, don't worry about it because it's all over our Facebook page, which is Around the House with Eric G. It's even on SoundCloud where our podcast shows up there. So you can find it out there. Let's run out here real quick to Dave in Portland. Dave, we only got about 30 seconds with you, but let me see if we can help you. Welcome to Around okay, the House. Um, hi. Um, so... About 10 plus years ago, we removed a wood stove, but the chimney is still, it's a wood frame chimney, it's still on our roof, and I've had some issues with it leaking, which I've kind of temporarily repaired. Um, who would I get a hold of to remove that and then kind of re resheave the roof and put, you know, replacement shingles up there? Would I go with a contractor, a roofing company? Um, I would get I- a hold of a roofing company. What kind of chimney is up through there? Is that, is it block brick? I didn't catch that. I had some noise well, here. Well, it's probably a metal pipe. Oh, okay. That, you know, That's a just a metal pipe. And it's got a wood frame built around it. Yeah, I'd get a hold of a roofing contractor. I'm sure they can take that down for you up there and, and knock that job. down and get that roof taken care of. That way you got one person working on it. Is that a big job? No, shouldn't be too bad. The biggest job is going to be matching up your shingles, man. 
Okay, thank you. Should be good. Hey, thanks for calling into Around the House, man. We really appreciate it. All right. Well, we got a few minutes left. Let's talk about Pyramid Heat and Cooling for a minute. Sure. So you guys do everything from Chiefs, everything heating and cooling. That's uh, that's our mission is to be able to help people with their home comfort needs, and that includes hot water boilers, uh, air filtration, uh, certainly regular furnaces or uh, air conditioning, heat pumps, all along. along all that those gamut. things, and. Even if you're doing a kitchen remodel, you can drag these guys in because if you're putting in that big thousand cubic foot per minute range hood, guess what? You got to figure out some makeup air some players. Yes, <laughs> yeah. 401 is the the CFM. Uh, at that point, you're going to have to put it in. It's a good idea anyway. Uh, it over really over is. in Washington, it's actually um, a lower number. It's uh, above 300 CFM. Yep. Uh, you've got to. Got to provide for that makeup here. And so what that means, just to educate you guys again out there on this one, if you have a vent fan that's going and it's blowing out off, you're cooking that steak dinner or whatever else in there, if you've got a gas, let's say you've got a gas furnace or a gas hot water heater that's firing off and you've got a nice tight home, you're now pulling potentially those dangerous gases back in the house, and that could be carbon monoxide poisoning because you're creating a vacuum and pulling it back in. So this is an important detail to remember when you're putting in those vent hoods. There can be a high consequence for that. So be really careful with putting vent hoods in. Remember, Portland is an area... Uh, we have a lot of radon problems, uh, a lot of issues like that. When you start putting the house under a big negative pressure, guess what? We create other problems. Yeah, that's a dangerous one right there. So what's the best way to get a hold of you guys? I mean, you guys are everywhere. Just get on a, like pyramidheating.com and go you, that route? You can uh, certainly uh, place that uh, order online. Uh, give us a call. Our phone number is 503-786-9522. Uh, we answer the phone. We uh, actually have a service that answers after hours, and we'll make sure that we get the message if uh, somebody needs service or help after hours. We can I've that. used that. <laughs> <laughs> Night before Thanksgiving, I used that. So, yep, yep, ouch, yep. And when you've got uh, 20 people coming over the next day for Thanksgiving dinner, and all of a sudden your control board's failed, sometimes how'd, those how'd things that, happen. How'd that turkey go? Did it? Uh, you guys came out and fixed it. Yeah, so I was good. good. It's nice to have See? people uh, in the corner. 10 o'clock at night, I had uh, had you guys out there fixing stuff that night, so Perfect. it worked out really well. Nice little service call, but uh, yeah, could that have been prevented? Absolutely. So guilty as charged. Where has this time gone today, man? There it is. And there's the show. This is uh, kind of crazy. This is kind of it for the show today. This is great. Thanks, guys, for being a sponsor of the show. Thanks for having us out here this time. It's it, been great. It's been a pleasure. Dave, it's, it's been awesome. wonderful having you on. It's awesome. You. That's all the time we got for this week. Our thanks to executive producer Dane Vodder for making the show sound great. John Eric Smith, you're in the communication center. And, of course, Jeff Thomas, keeping us on track and on air. Most of all, though, we want to thank you for listening. We want you to join us next week from Noon to 2, where once again we talk about maintenance, repair, designing for remodeling, and renovation of your home. Until then, be sure you do what you love, love what you do. This is the Radio Northwest Network. I'm Eric G. I'm Dane Vodder. And you've been listening to, to Around, Around the House. House. Around the House with Eric G. is produced by Alpha Media USA in association with Design by Eric G. LLC. All rights reserved, copyright 2019. We will be back next week. If you missed part of the show, check out the podcast and all the shows at AroundTheHouseOnline.com. Remember, measure with a micrometer, mark with chalk, and cut with an axe. Thanks for listening to Around the House. We're all over.